Hello everybody! Welcome back to another 3D printing technology video. Um, today we are going to tackle a problem with um, the hot end fan. The fan is just noisy, cranky, and driving me up the wall. Um, this printer is a CR10, um, so luckily with that we can use the knock to a fan and not have to put a butt converter in, we can just straight install it. So really nice, gonna make the printer really a lot quieter with that fan, especially with the fan that I have now. It's original stock fan, it's been there for about a year and it's just clicking and messy and just, it's time to replace it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you at the end. Hey everybody, so we're back in the workroom, and as you can hear, that fan just don't sound good. So we are going to go ahead and replace it. Um, I'm going to use a Noctua fan to replace it. It is just a simple little fan. I'll put a link. I can put a link in the description. It's a three-pin fan, where we're going down to a two-pin fan on the CR10. Now the convenient thing about the CR10 is it is the same ampage. We don't have to put a butt converter in. Uh, for this printer, for the fan. Now, if you're doing this on an Ender 3, um, you have to put a butt converter in to lower the ampage because I believe that's a 24 volt. These fans are only 12 volt. Um, or luckily, the CR10 that I have is 12 volt. So I don't have to put a bucky converter in. So we're going to go ahead and get started in taking this apart. Now, you're messing with electronics. The first step you always do, shut off the printer and take out your power plug. Since we're messing with power, you want to be safe. Next thing we'll do is we'll come in here and there's these two screws right here that are holding this entire assembly in place. We're going to take those off so that we can get access to the fan. You'll see, whoops, uh-oh, come back. I don't want to lose you. I need to use you. All right, so there's one. There's, this is number two. Now, when we put this back together, I'm going to add an extra component. I'm going to add this for an upcoming video. This is for the Easy ABL. Um, it's going to hold my sensor. Um, since I have these screws off, I'm going to go ahead and place the uh, connector in place. So now we've got those screws off. Now we can bring this carriage out to where we can see it. As you can see, the fan. I'm trying to get it in here. Ow! Woo, that's a little hot. Um, get it here where we can see it. There is some PLA and old grubby stuff in there. need to cut that. Let me get a pair of snips here. I'm going to cut the zip tie so we can get access to the cabling a little easier. All right, there we go. And hell oh, la la, there's the wiring. All right, so we're in better shape. The wires we want are these red and blacks. So we've disconnected the power. So what I want to do is I want to give myself plenty of cable and I'm going to snip the old fan off. Right about there. All right, so the old fan has been snipped off. As you can see down in there, we have um, four of the Allen wrench screws. So I'm going to get my Allen wrench here and we're going to get those out. So we can place the new fan. You want to hold on to these screws because we're going to need them to place the new fan. Now the reason why I chose a Noctua fan is they just tend to be quieter. Um, they're good quality fans. So I want to make sure that we have the best fan possible. So I'm going to get these out of here. Real quick. And we'll talk about the new one a little bit more. So I'm going to utilize a converter that comes with it. So the fan is a three pin, has a three pin option, but it comes with a two pin to three pin converter. I'm going to use that converter or I'm going to use one of the options that comes in the kit to wire this in. So now we've got that all undone. It should be just as simple as pushing the fan out. I make it sound simple but sometimes you just gotta come in and push from that way to get the fan to come free. Oh, 
Okay, so we're gonna fight with me. What's new? Ain't a fun project unless it argues with you, right? Okay, need a little bit more persuasion. <laughs> need more power! We're gonna get this guy up and out of there. What is holding you in there that I am not seeing? There we go. Grab it by the wire. Now you can see everything's in there. The fan's out. I don't see anything wrong with any of the blades. I've had it one ender three where the blades were just messed up. You can also see it just kind of gets dirty back in here, which could be causing some of the sound. That piece of PLA right there could have been clipping the blade. But these fans are just kind of noisy in the first place. So, one thing I am going to do is make sure I have the airflow proper. So, we want our fan to sit in like this. And what's nice about using the adapter is I can go ahead and put the fan in, make sure my airflow is going the correct direction get this guy kind of situated in here and get him bolted in real quick so I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted in I'll be right back um, I'm gonna fast forward while we bolt this in to talk about the wiring be right back all right so I've got the new fan mounted it's in there looking pretty I did have to replace two screws um, for some reason I was just having an issue getting it to cover so I'm gonna pull my wire over and make sure that is not gonna be an issue I want to make sure that these don't get in the way either and get caught by anything. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide this guy back over just kind of get a look at it because uh, the wires that I need are up here. So actually I could probably go ahead and actually I'm going to go ahead and remount this uh, for now just to kind of give some stability. Now I'm changing things up. As I said earlier, I'm going to add the easy ABL mount to my carriage. This is for a future video. Um, I'm gonna change my screws, I think. I need, yep. I'm going, well, no, I don't think I need to. So I'm going to go try this with my original carriage screw. It may be too short, it may be too long, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Whoops. Uh, the funness of small parts, right? That's gonna be too short. Okay. So I'm gonna go over to my trusty little kit. Now, if you're on Amazon, I can pick this. Commodex makes a great M3, 4, and 5 kit that you can purchase. Um, if you're gonna be doing any 3D printing and modification, I highly recommend getting the kit. I wanna say it was like 20 some odd dollars. It wasn't terribly expensive, but uh, it will give you all kinds of the different screw sizes that you need for doing these mods. Um, it's been extremely handy since I purchased it and I highly recommend anybody that's wanting to do these modifications like I'm doing, um, that is a kit you want to have on hand. All right, so this arm that I'm adding is for an easy ABL sensor that we'll be adding in for auto bed leveling. Um, I have it on one of my Ender 3s. It's a really handy tool. It works really well. Um, Kind of one of those things i have enjoyed using it it's made my printing faster smoother i'm not sitting there doing a bunch of bed leveling um, which can just be tedious um, th3d makes the easy abl kit i highly recommend them um, their customer support is uno they, they're the best um, they worked well with me um, when i first tried to do the easy B, easy abl on my ender 3 and my father's ender 3 um, I ran into some problems on the programming side, but that's for another video um, that's going to be coming up soon. So now we've got these two wires and we got this coming out. Well, this is a three pin, this is a two pin, that ain't going to work. What's awesome with the fans is it comes with a OmniJoin cable kit, which is exactly what we need. So there's two ways to go about this. So the Omni Table Joint Kit comes with this connector. So it's two wires, it's a two to three pin connector. It will slide right in to our connector and make it work 
and make it quick connect from our printer. So if the Noctua fan ever goes out, um, this guy ever crashes, I can just go get another Noctua, open this up, pop it in, pop the connector on, boom, we're done. It's really a nice tool, makes things a lot easier to go this method. Um, they do give you the little connectors that you can use that they recommend. Or if you're feeling um, kind of on the fancy side, you can solder the connection. I have misplaced my handy dandy little sorry, kit of uh, solder connectors. What did I do with those? Ah, parts, you can never find them when you need them. Ah, I'll add a link to those in the video as well. They come in handy, they're in a little kit. And what you can do is they have the solder in the middle and it's a slip over each end. Um, then you use a heat gun um, to make that work. They're a pretty handy little kit. Um, I know I have some, I just don't see them. So, I will be right back, guys. So, here's what I was talking about. They're, uh, you can see the solders in the middle of them. They're heat shrink wrap. When you heat this up with the heat gun, this middle solder piece melts in to do your solder, and this wraps around your, your wires. Now, I could do this. I'm not going to this time around. I may later. Um, this is also, um, it's a Kujet kit. They're heat shrink heat shrink wire connectors. Uh, they're waterproof, they're great, especially if water activity, stuff like this. I can put a link to these in the description as well. Another wonderful thing to have around if you have a 3D printer um, that makes this a little easier to work. But I'm just gonna do this with the little uh, butt connectors. So what you gotta do, it's pretty simple. Printer is still off and unplugged. <laughs> Make sure you are unplugged. You do not want to get zapped. So I'll strip both my ends. I'll do the same here at the printer. Um, I'm kind of one of those. I'll do both ends at the same time. Just be careful. That you don't damage the wires. You don't want them to break further down and cause an issue. And you don't really need to strip too much. So, nice thing about these, we'll get the red to red. Give them a little twist so they go in well. And one goes on each side. Just like that. Push them up in there pretty firm. And take your, I'm gonna use my wire snips. And squeeze. All there is to it. We'll repeat the same process here on black. trying to kind of push back on me a little bit. It's always the fun. I swear human beings sometimes need three hands. And we'll give him a good squeeze. And we're connected. And then I've got the fan plugged in. So just for a quick test run, we will give our printer some juice. And we'll turn it on. And there she goes. Running nice smooth and quiet no more clicking so we've got the new fan in place it looks great we got our easy abl ready for the next project so now all we gotta do is clean up the wiring mess so there's a couple ways to go about this um me i like the zip tie method so I'm going to take two zip ties and put it across there. And I don't 
This is my printer. I don't really care about seeing the mask. You can fancy this up all that you want. Um, I'm just gonna make it gussy it up, look clean so it can't snag anything. Just a couple of zip ties. And then we are done with this project. Zip tie number one. You can use smaller zip ties. These are just what I have on hand. Zip tie that up there. Come back with our snips. Clean it up. that guy a little tighter and we're done that's it so that's all there is for the noctua fan upgrade for your hot end pretty simple we've upgraded the extruder now we got the hot end fan nice and quiet this is so much better already the next project will be getting the easy abl mounted on i'll get the sensor mounted on get the mount down here at the base and then we are going to be opening up this box and doing a firmware upgrade on it um, I may go ahead and purchase the fans at the same time since it's open and do a knock to a fan upgrade on this on the control box as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and we will see you next time. All right, well, that was the replacement of the hot end fan. Pretty quick, simple little job. Now, if you're doing this on an Ender 3 or another printer, like I said in the video, you need to use a butt converter. Um, they're pretty cheap. You can get a group of them. Um, actually, we're going to do an Ender 3 upgrade with one of these. But the little butt convert is just a little chip that lets us adjust the, uh, the voltage down from the 24 volt down to the 12 volt for the fan. So that way we don't blow up the fan. Um, it will require soldering. Um, some of them don't, some of them do. This one does require soldering that I like to use. So um, you'll need definitely want to have a good soldering iron for this. Um, but that'll be another video further down the road. And next video, I think we're going to be replacing a hot end on an Ender 3. So see you guys next time. Hit that like, hit, hit that like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. Hit that subscribe button to continue watching the channel. And I will see you next time. And ring that bell so you get notifications after you subscribe of coming up videos on the channel. Thank you and see you later.